Repeatedly, I have mocked and insulted a wide array of people for the ridiculous ideas that they hold. I have swear words in the titles of over half my videos, I have talked about controversial topics, and I have probably broken at least half of YouTube's vague rules. And yet, not a single one of my videos have been demonetized. Why? The answer to this question is simple. We first need to go to a website called Social Blade. Social Blade, in case you didn't know, is a website where you can look at the analytics of people on YouTube and other social media platforms. If you go look at mine, we see what you would expect, a bunch of numbers. But look at that. If you look at the channel type, you see that I'm a tech channel. Obviously, we can't make assumptions based solely off that. We need more evidence to draw the link between the two. We need a third variable. On Twitter, I've seen a lot of people who I follow talk about being demonetized or be put in a limited state. So I decided to go and check what these other channels who were being demonetized are categorized as. All the ones I checked were categorized as one of the following. People, entertainment, and news. YouTube can be broken down into multiple categories ranging from autos and vehicles to categories like news and politics. No. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Perhaps Google and YouTube are using your category to help narrow down where to look for the offensive content, which they said they'd be looking for in a recent blog post. Why would they do this? Well, it uses less resources and it narrows down the search. It's unlikely that you'd ever find a video talking about sensitive subjects in the sports category. Why waste time, energy, and money looking in the wrong place? Also, have you noticed that you don't see people who fall into categories like sports ever making videos complaining about ads? Well, if I'm correct, then it's because they are largely unaffected. Same can be said about science and tech channels like mine, or comedy, or gaming, which have been largely unaffected by the demonetizations. Still unconvinced? Well, consider this. YouTube recently had a ton of advertisers leave the platform because they didn't want to support controversial content, right? Wouldn't it be wise to shift advertising towards places where the negative content is less likely to appear and where YouTube can make the most money? Well, based off statistics from Statistica, the most popular and probably the most profitable categories were... I have no clue if Statistica is reliable or even credible, which I doubt, but it's the only stats I could find in this. If you have any better info, let me know. I've seen a lot of ideas proposed about what the algorithm is searching for. Ideas like certain tags put in the video or words in the video title. I've also heard that comments left on the video affect it. Or getting flagged from dissatisfied viewers can set it off. Could be all of these things. Or it could be none of them. Or it could be any combination of them. But I'll tell you what it's not. It's not some grand conspiracy by Google to censor conservative opinions or anti-SJW content. I've seen a ton of so-called skeptics pull all sorts of nonsense out of their asses. It's a real pity that so many people will refuse to do the slightest bit of research and believe such nonsense in favor of a what-if. In my last video, I talked a bit about the psychology behind people who hold this what-if, therefore deny the counter evidence that proves a what-if wrong mindset. Let me give you an example of one of these people. And we've already witnessed some troubling behavior from YouTube and Google. Out of nowhere, on August 1st, 2017, Professor Jordan B. Peterson lost access to his YouTube channel and his Google account. No warning, no reason given, just poof, gone. Peterson appealed and was denied, again with no reason given. He rallied his substantial followers, loyal followers I might add, to petition Goku Goku, to petition YouTube to reinstate his accounts. Later that day, they were awarded back to him. Again, no reason given. Clearly, this is a sign of something more nefarious going on. This can't just be about advertisers. Someone at Google wanted Peterson gone. To vanish. Google is a massive company that makes almost no money from YouTube. They probably only keep it around because it's the second largest search engine on the internet. They needed to keep track of over 500 million accounts, which is done with powerful computers that are working 24-7 to keep order. Recently, this platform was attacked by the Wall Street Journal in a hit piece that caused many advertisers to boycott YouTube. The people working for YouTube and Google had to scramble to come up with a solution to win back advertisers and continue to break even, money-wise. Do you really think they care about the opinions spoken by people like you or Peterson? What seems more likely? 
Google is conspiring to push an evil agenda of censorship on their platform by demonetizing creators who speak controversial opinions to relatively small audiences, wasting valuable resources during a time of crisis for their company, because what they really care about is people like you speak the truth Google doesn't want you to know. Or, Google is shifting ads and resources to content that is often less controversial and is far more popular and profitable than channels like yours or Peterson's, making Google and YouTube more money in the long run. In the case of Jordan Peterson, there are plenty of reasons why his account would be removed, temporarily. The most likely is that it was just an error made by the algorithm that was created to constantly search for violations of the terms of service. The people at Google realized this error and fixed it. If someone at Google wanted Peterson gone, as you stated, he would be gone. Also, why would they go after Peterson? There are plenty of other people with larger audiences who have far more controversial opinions than his. Why didn't Google go after them instead? These errors happen all the time. Channels, accounts, random people lose them for no reason, only to later have Google or YouTube come and correct this mistake. Because that's what it was. A mistake. In Peterson's case, however, he uses these instances of so-called censorship to garner victim points for money. Which I don't really care about. What I do care about is when so-called skeptics rightfully criticize people for crying oppression for money, but when someone they like, like Jordan, does the same thing, it's some grand conspiracy. Why? I don't know. And I don't really fucking care. I don't care what your motive is for doing something. And I'm not going to assume it. All I care about is your actions, what you say, and what you believe. There are two types of people I hate more than anything. Liars and hypocrites. Liars because they distort the truth for money or to push some ideological bias. Hypocrites because they hold themselves and others like them up to one standard, while the other side, the ones who they oppose, to another. This whole YouTube Google ad conspiracy is a bunch of bullshit that I've seen so many people use to gain victim points, where they then beg their audiences to give them money. I have no problems if you encourage people to fund your channel because you need money to keep it running. Or if you want to make YouTube your career. That's great. But you don't need a fearmonger and make almost baseless assertions for money. I have a Patreon and I sell shirts, but I don't cram it down people's throats because I don't need money to make videos. And because I don't do this for money. I make videos because I enjoy making content that others like watching. That's what it should be about. If you're a creator and you're only doing it for the money, then you're doing it for the wrong reason. I'm proud of my tech status. I'll wear it like a badge. And that is why I can say whatever I want. And you can't. <sighs> There's still more than I want. Okay, so first of all, this video has taken me months to get out. I was halfway done with it all the way back at Halloween. And the reason for that is new information kept coming out. New facts, new evidence. Right, so I had to constantly go back, re-record things, and adjust the script, and re-edit things. It was a pain, to say the least. The reason why you're getting this video now is because two things have happened recently. Um, first of all, the uh, Logan Paul incident, where uh, this huge creator posted a video of a dead person. Suicide was in the title, you know. Um, but that video was fully monetized. He made a ton of money off of it. Uh, and it was also on the YouTube trending page. So the second event that has happened relatively recently is uh, YouTube's decision to demonetize 95% of YouTube. Uh, and that affects only the small creators. The people who haven't passed the 1,000 subscriber milestone and the 4,000 hour watch time, I think it's called. And these two events have proven to me personally that everything that I've said in this video is actually how they are doing it. How they are determining who gets ads and who doesn't. It's not so much based off uh, whether you're you say bad things or mean things or whatever. Um, it's more so based off of your category and how much money you are bringing in to YouTube. Because Google is a company, right? Their main goal is to make money and grow. It's, it's a super organism, like an animal, right? It needs to consume things to grow. If you want to understand the motivations of a massive company like Google, simply follow the money. It's that simple. You don't need to make shit up. You don't need to... <laughs> spew bullshit. Just follow the money. It's that simple. Um, there's a few creators that I wanted to give a shout out to because they have not yet passed that milestone and they were a little freaked out about it. I personally follow these creators and I think they make some pretty good content. 
So instead of going and explaining what each of their channels is about, I've instead created a playlist where you can go and watch my personal favorite video that they've produced. So, just to conclude, <laughs> stop making shit up for money. It's getting really, really annoying. <laughs> Have a nice day. Why is this video monetized when my video talking about my mom having Alzheimer's is demonetized? What the fuck is wrong with the world right well, now? I'd say that's a I, good point. Honestly, Jeff, yeah. if you want an answer to that... Why did the Washington Post put an ad on this video? Yeah, that's what I want to know, too. I saw an ad on this video on my wife's computer. I have YouTube Red, so ads don't show up. But on hers, yeah, an ad showed up. Well, look at with a title like this. Crazy SJW. Liberal. No, you know, my... I, if I uploaded a video like that, it would be demonetized. The demonetization is relatively haphazard, and both Pat and I pay attention to when videos become demonetized on YouTube. And sometimes Pat will come to me and he'll say, did you see that video A, totally innocuous topic, is demonetized, but somehow our video about ISIS is fully monetized and running ads. And I will say to Pat, yeah, I did see that, and I couldn't understand it. And it is very, very weird. They're planning on burying undesirable channels under a new shadow banning program designed to hide videos that Google doesn't think are appropriate for their website. Mapunions. They're censoring Mapunions. Not only were my political videos getting restricted, as expected, but totally benign videos like completely non-sexual LGBT videos and acne videos, they completely disappeared. They're censoring Mapunions. You can imagine that the regressives have their talons deeply embedded in the backs of Google's management. But perhaps they don't truly control them. Opinions.